Hi guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com. Hey, it's been a while since I've posted a video, so I thought maybe I'd get one out there at least let you guys know that maybe I didn't die or something, right? Uh, but I've been really busy uh, with a couple projects around the house. Um, I've done a rewire job and hung a rack in my basement um, in order to distribute uh, ethernet and uh, cable uh, in the walls uh, to my house. I've got a lot of that done, at least it's in place now, the infrastructure is. I uh, set up a free NAS server to, uh, with uh, about 9 terabytes of space on it to, uh, for my uh, home um, media uh, PC, my th home theater PC, um, except now that it's distributed to multiple devices throughout the house um, coming off the free NAS. Uh, that may not make sense to a lot of you guys, but that's one of the things I've been doing. The other things is um, um, I've been making um, some homemade uh, wrought iron rails or iron rails for my front porch. Um, my mother-in-law has uh, been staying with us in the old uh, two by four banister type rails or you know that we had out there. I felt they were a little insecure. They were kind of flopping around and stuff and I wanted something that looked nice and I want something sturdy if, enough that uh, if my big old butt fell in it, it would hold me. So uh, they're all at least welded and, and put into place and uh, I got a little grinding and some touch-up painting and a little bit more to do on my front porch and it'll be done. And of course I've got some other remodeling stuff uh, going on in the basement. So I've been really busy. So not that I haven't wanted to make any videos, I just really haven't had time. So um, I'll show you uh, uh, some pictures uh, of that stuff now. First, let me apologize if there's an audio level difference between this and the video. I'm recording this on my desktop so you guys can see the images. So here's a picture of the wrought iron rails that uh, my friend John Johnson and I made for my front porch. Again, like I said, I made these because the old wooden banisters, they were kind of floppy and wobbly and stuff, and I was afraid that uh, somebody would get hurt. And my mother-in-law has been staying with us, and so I was concerned that if she would grab a hold of those, I didn't want her to fall. So here's a, another view of them. These rails are uh, made with a one inch uh, heavy wall square tubing for the posts, uh, inch and, or I'm sorry, two and three eighths inch mild steel balls for the tops. The, the top and bottom rails are uh, half inch by inch and a quarter by eighth inch channel. The pickets are half inch solid square stock. Uh, some of them are straight. We've twisted some of them. And then finally the scrolls are made out of uh, eighth inch by uh, half inch strap. Uh, anyway, I'm pretty pleased how they have turned out. thought maybe I'd show them off and let you guys see them. So here are a few pictures of the rack that I hung in the basement. Uh, I need to thank my son Zachary and his friend Morgan for help hold this thing up on the wall while I got it lagged in. Uh, the whole point of hanging this up was uh, so that I can get uh, a centralized location to distribute cable TV and Ethernet for uh, computers, wireless devices, and that sort of stuff. So it may not interest a whole lot of people, but it's just one of those things that I was working on and, and not really having a chance to play around with the, the lathe and that sort of thing. Uh, the other thing I want to say about this is that I probably should have brought my phone in here, but you know I don't know anybody hardly that uses a landline anymore, uh, but I guess I do have the option if I wanted to. I could bring the landline. And then here, the picture that you see with it open, you see that uh, the cable... Uh, TV drops come there in the back so uh, my plans are I'll put a small amplifier there to distribute those so anyway I just want to show those and and see what you guys thought so let's get back to what we were supposed to be talking about and that's the counter shaft okay well I hope you had uh, um, a good look at that stuff maybe it's interesting if you got questions uh, shoot me an email you can go to myheap.com and uh, click the contact button or you can uh, just message me here down below so um, in this video, um, I want to carry on with uh, my counter shaft. And recall that the counter shaft had been modified from what it would have been originally in the um, uh, the, the original Atlas counter shaft, where the castings uh, had been bored out and bearings pressed into the ends, and then the counter shafts or the counter shaft itself turned down, and then. Um, threaded on the end for a zerk fitting and one of the uh, problems that are really kind of seen with that setup was um, that uh, even though you had a zerk fitting there and you could pump grease into it there's really there was really no way of getting fresh grease into the bearings because there was nowhere for the old grease to evacuate there was there wasn't a hole drilled in the seal or anything like that 
So uh, I spent a lot of time asking questions to um, Lyle Peterson. Uh, you guys probably know as Mr. Pete 222 or Tubal Kane. Uh, he's he is my shop to uh, my YouTube shop teacher and thank you um, uh, Mr. Peterson for everything that you've uh, shared and with us in the community and and have taught me so I'm a computer geek uh, trying to play around with machine tools I don't know if that's a great combination but that's where we're at and I also want to thank Mr. Uh, Art Eckstein for uh, uh, all the uh, help and and suggestions that uh, he gave uh, and of course Mr. Peterson gave uh, about um, using sealed bearings uh the bearings i bought were sealed uh, on both sides and i'll show that here in just a minute um so i'm going to do away with the uh, uh you know trying to grease them with the zerk fitting i'm just using sealed bearings on both sides uh the only difference is the original um fanfur bearings were 12 millimeter id 35 millimeter od and um a half inch thick um, I, I, I could find those, but they were really expensive, and I thought, well, you know, I don't know that it was worth it. So, but anyway, we'll get more into that. So, um, let's, uh, let me just stop ye uh, running my gums, and let's get to it. Okay, guys, so let's take a real quick look at uh, what we got. So, originally, it had these fanfare bearings in there, and um, these were 202 KTs um, with a... 12 millimeter bore, uh, 35 millimeter outside diameter, and half inch thick. Okay, so our our uh, castings were bored out to match that. Those bearings were pressed in, and then of course they were put on the counter shaft. And as I pointed out, there were zerk fittings in the end of the counter shaft uh, to allow you to pump grease, and and then it would evacuate through this hole right here. I don't know if you can see that or not. And in theory, I guess you can grease the uh, bearings, but you'll notice that the uh, fanfare bearing here is it's sealed on one side. Now this side was packed with grease, and it was pretty cruddy and and, and gunky, you know, hard. And um, but it, you know, I don't know how you couldn't get any grease out of it. I don't know how. So I uh, decided to do away with this idea. Uh, and the reason why I changed it, I got a couple of these that are really rough. So so we're gonna not use those. And instead, what I bought to replace them are, uh, these are bearings from VXB. They're sealed on both sides. Um, but now the drawback is uh, I could find the correct ID of 12 millimeter and the correct OD of 35 millimeter, but the width I could uh, only find uh, as 11 millimeter. Now that's, uh, um, about 433 thousandths compared to the 500 thousandths that the original ones were okay so I have two options I could um, uh, make a little spacer uh, to sit behind the bearing in the bore and then press those flush up against there or I can just use some Loctite and um, since my lathe is um, not really in a position to be turning anything yet um, because I'm still putting it together I've opted to just Loctite these in, okay? And uh, so I'll, they're a, a light press fit. I'll press them in until they're flush with the outside edge, let the Loctite set up, and then go ahead and use them as is. Uh, so I need to put a big thanks out there to uh, Mr. Lyle Peterson and uh, Art uh, Eckstein, who uh, both seem to agree that they would just, you know, put them in there and run with it. And, and, and uh, thank you to both of them for pointing out you know the Loctite to use now. You know I don't I don't know much about Loctite, and uh, it seems like uh, they got Baskin Robbins uh, beat on the number of flavors. So uh, I asked around, and so I ended up uh, settling on uh, Loctite 641. Um, this bearing retainer uh, is supposed to be um, allow you to disassemble later if you need to disassemble. So this is the one I'm going to use, and let's get started here. So this is a brand new. And by the way, when I ordered this. Um, I forget where I ordered it from, but I think it came from uh, France, right? And uh, I don't quite understand that, why we can't find anything locally here in the country anymore. It drives me nuts. Um, but I guess that's just the way it's going to be. Alright, so um, these have already been cleaned up. Um, like I said, I'm going to just put a little, some Loctite around these bearings here uh, on the outsides. And then I'm just going to press them in. So, 
So I'm already making a mess. So all right, so I'm just going to put some around here. You get it to come out. There it comes. All right. So I never use this stuff. So is that enough? Is that too much? So you guys can help me out here. So like I said, these uh, bearings. I'm just going to drive them in here with this piece of wood until they're flush. Well, that sounds a lot meaner than what it is, doesn't it? Okay, so that's that one. Wipe up my excess here. Alright. Alright, so that's the first one. And oops, you know I forgot to wipe that off. I mean I cleaned all this stuff, but still. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Okay. That one's all right. Oh, see, I didn't even have to push that one hardly in there. So I tell you what, I'm going to do. I'm just going to push that down just so that it's flush, just like that, and uh, wipe off my excess here. Mm. Hopefully that will set up. All right, so I want to set that one aside and uh, do the next one here. Set that over there so I don't lose it. All right, so let's do the next one. Like I said, the uh, bearings, uh, you know, they're between a slide fit and maybe a slight press fit. You've seen that first one went in kind of hard and and uh, the other one just slid right in. So let's see what this one does. Stick that on my finger. Like so. You know what? I bet I can just like that. Oop. I hope that uh, hope that retains them. Wipe off the excess here. And I'm just gonna let that one sit like that. Okay. So again, this is, you see that's just a slide fit there, so I hope, that, uh, hope that'll work. All right, that one's flush, and, and that one's flush. The other one is flush on both sides. So I'm going to uh, let these sit, and then, um, for an hour or so and then kind of check on them and then if it's good from there we'll carry on so I'll see you here in a little bit okay so it's uh, it's been about an hour and I think that uh, we can probably go ahead and check these um, it feels it feels like it's setting up I think it takes about 24 hours for the stuff to fully cure so I'm not gonna get crazy with it but I think it's uh, enough here that we can probably at least maybe put it together. So um, I have the uh, 
Zerk fittings here. I'm just going to go ahead and put them back in there even though I'm not going to use them. I'm just going to plug the holes with them. Uh, maybe the next owner will, will know not to use them. I'll just pass that information on. Alright, so. Okay. Now, here's the Woodruff key. Let's go ahead and slide that in there. Let me tap that down. Alright. Now, the long end of the shaft here goes that way because the out outboard uh, pulley goes here. So I'll just slide this on. Like so, I'm not going to tighten that up yet. And of course we have our bearings that go on like this. So let me um, let me get this mounted in the yoke over here, and then I'll bring you back in. So let's uh, I'll see you here in just a second. Okay, so the uh, counter shaft is all hooked up, and uh, uh, the belt's lined up, and the motor pulley on. It uh, tightens up. So let's uh, let's plug this in and see how it sounds. All right, got the power plugged in. And, uh, you know what? That's uh, pretty quiet, except that I notice that my motor pulley is a little cattywampus. But if you recall, that shaft had a big old um, um, divot in it. I'm gonna see if I can straighten that out and see what we can do about that but anyway it's together it's uh, pretty quiet I'm really pleased with that and of course now by the time I put it in back gears let's see what it sounds like we'll go ahead and put it in back gears let me uh, pull, pull the pan here or push the pan rather oh. right, pull the pan yeah, big old fingers. There we go. Get her in back gears. There we go. Of course, now I don't have any lubricant on the uh, back gears yet, so I don't want to run it too long. But uh, you know what? She sounds pretty good. So I think we're getting pretty close. I think uh, I'll do a little more work on this pulley over here, see if I can figure out why it's wobbling like this. Uh, I did make sure that the uh, shaft was uh, horizontal to this one or best I could tell and uh, so other than that I think the next thing uh, I'll do is I got some goodies for the lathe I, and I even got a, a couple of gifts and I'll uh, do a little video on that and hopefully we can uh, get it up and running here I'm excited and then I'm ready to make something so anyway this is Joe Hildreth from My Heap uh, thanks for taking the time to watch this video thanks uh, for taking the time um, to spend with me and again if you have any questions uh, feel free to post down below um, this uh, YouTube video or you can go to myheap.com that's m-y-h-e-a-p.com and click the contact link at the top of the page and you can send me an email so uh, other than that have a blessed day